Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final game in this best of three Collegiate Star League regular season matchup. We have the Ore Diggers of Colorado School of Mines going up against the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona University. In the lower left-hand corner of our screen, it is the Gold Protoss. This time, it is Spiral. Spawning in the top right hand corner of the map, it is our red zerk. It is Keevan. Yeah, and click this annotation right here that should be on screen already. Whoa, post production. To go back and see game number one, or this one here, to go back and see game number two, because this is game number three. You've kind of already spoiled it for yourself a little bit, but don't worry. You can still watch some pretty fun games. And of course, this is a best of three, so this is winner take all. It is. And with me, that voice that you hear that is not Ord, that is Gary Oak. Follow him on Twitter, pretty please, at Gary Oak Robotron. Gary is from British Columbia, and he was just telling me he lives near a marsh, and I'm confused. I do. I actually live near a marsh. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice to walk around. Bunch just, of ducks there. I just, like, Canada and cold, you know, kind of line up it, for me. So when you're talking about marsh, I'm like, well, what about... How is that what? BC is actually a very temperate climate. It doesn't get that hot and it doesn't get that cold. It's kind of chilly, but that's about it. I mean, I can walk around in like jeans and hoodie and I'm fine. Oh my goodness. Sorry, we totally missed this. <laughs> I totally <laughs> missed it anyway. Six pool, it happened. La! Game number three, Keevan with the balls of steel. I don't know if I should say that on my channel. Too late. <laughs> There's gotta and, be one uh, photon cannon down. It's in the main, so that's the right response from Spiral. He's gonna basically be forced to build a gateway behind his minerals, like so. And wow, this is actually kind of ballsy by Keevan. He's just going right for it. If Spiral messes up his micro, he can actually get this cannon and end the game, so. Ah, uh, but... nice surround there with the probes. Probes do a pretty good job against the Zerglings, and uh, I like that Keevan's harassing a little bit, but I really wanted to be careful and then just, yeah, okay, run away. All right, now he can go kill a pylon and kill a forge for free, and then he can expand behind it as long as this annoying probe goes away. It's kind of funny that the six pool is not technically an all-in because of what it does. It basically puts the Protoss behind and puts them on one base and completely screws with the standard Protoss strategy. And it doesn't ever kill the Protoss unless they really screw up, which shouldn't happen at this level. It shouldn't happen if you're in, like, above Platinum League, to be honest. <laughs> it does happen on occasion, but yeah, I definitely agree with you. I like this, too, out of Spiral. He's putting down his pylons in such a way that... Uh, the access to his probes by any more lings is very limited. Uh, Keevan's going to go back up in, try and see if there's anything that he can do, but Spiral's keeping it tight. Yeah, it's some pretty hot Sim City right there. I'm hot and bothered by this. And we do see the Cybercore going down, so he's basically going to be forced into one gate expand, I guess. Yeah, and Keevan's uh, exploring the map with some Zerglings, trying to find... Yes, he does! He gets the gold! Probe die. <coughs> Sorry. I actually like this pylon because it forced um, it forced Keevan to expand a lot later than he normally would have liked to. He didn't opt to go for that third base, which is what I find a little bit strange. Usually, when you're in such a position, you go, yeah, screw it, I'll get the third base, kill Ooh. off the pylon at my leisure, and then get my second. Yeah, I agree with you. There's some nice control by Spiral with this one Zealot, as he doesn't really have all that much to do right now. Uh, Keevan's trying to kill that assimilator to keep spiral from getting a lot of gas uh and really if he had done that this would have devolved i think into a four gate but now spiral's still gonna have the gas economy to potentially tech exactly and since we see three and three i doubt we'll be seeing any sort of four gate oh keevan i think getting a little overexcited here has a miss rally indeed queen wandering out to the middle of the map and is being followed by multiple drones Oh, that's oh. very unfortunate. There's another queen Ugh. rallied down there for some reason. Is he, is he just going into the attack, though? Is, is he that... all inning? Is he doing, like, the bit by oh. bit? Oh! He canceled his base, so... Yeah! But he's got three Zerglings sitting at his third base looking pretty. I mean, if you want a bit by bit, bring all your units. Oh my goodness, it takes so long for this to happen, and now <laughs> Spiral is aware that it's going to because his... <laughs> Zealot Stalker Poke uh, got turned around halfway across the map. We have a lot more lings. Another queen following up. Keevan's at 30 supply right now. This is so weird. 
<laughs> I think Keevan is having an identity crisis. He's probably thinking that he's like check prime or something in the early beta back when queens moved really fast off creep. And now he's turning around. He's, he's got turning around. Pots. He's got cold oh, feet. Oh no. He well he went up and saw the force field, saw what he was up against. He's like, "Yeah, I'm not going to break this. This is a bad idea." Yeah. But that puts him so far behind. He missed about a quadrillion in jacks. <laughs> Somewhere between one and infinity. Yeah, he's he's definitely quite fine, and yeah, this queen is still in the middle of the map. At this point, he may as well just get a layer and drop creep, and then start creep tumoring up the center of the map, rather than just have her waddle all the way home. Yeah, actually, <laughs> it may be a faster thing to do as she's still there. And so Keevan's going to continue to put on the pressure, which I do like. He's just trying to make sure that Spiral doesn't have a chance to expand. Hallucination coming out of Spiral. Oh, yeah. So I wonder if he's going to just use it for Phoenix Scouts, or is he actually going to try and fake a tech switch with it? Because that's always clever. Yeah, I, I like it so much when they fake a tech switch. Like, just a random Colossi. You're like, what? Where did that come from? Oh, my God. But probably going to be a Phoenix, as he really does not have a lot of map information. He tried to send out that probe earlier, but it got killed halfway across the map. What I don't like, though, is that Keevan still has not set up a second expansion, hasn't saturated that his first expansion. Like, he's just... It's, 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 ah. Keevan's basically in the Stone Age against an Iron Age opponent. Usually that doesn't end too well. And Spiral's moving out right now as he rebuilds his Forge and Expanse. Oh, that... Yep, there's the Phoenix. Yep, and Spiral is about to know just how far ahead he is, as he sees the entire army, sees his opponent's defense. He sees everything there is to see. Lair's not even started, so that must make uh, Spiral feel tingly all over. <laughs> yeah, who's Nation revealed there, actually? Didn't quite get away before. He's going to see the third base now, or the lack thereof. Zergenly for Keevan does get up into the expansion area. Knows that it's going to be completed, didn't get cancelled or anything like that, so that's a nice little piece of information. He Keevan's knows... even a little supply block, too. Oh, yeah, he is. He doesn't have another pylon on the way, either. Well, his overlord's nearly done. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and Spiral's actually <clears throat> opting to move back. I um... guess... Maybe it's ace match pressure, maybe he's like, well, this is the ace match, so, so uh, actually he doesn't, because these matches are played at the same time, right? Uh, quite possibly. I'm not sure how these ones were done exactly. Um, judging by the fact, though, that we have some chatter coming from observers, uh, like Coldflame, who played in the last game, was talking during this game, I'm guessing that he knows that this is the ace match. Oh yeah, that's probably true, so he's like, yeah, I don't want to screw this up and lose the entire best of three for my team. Uh, and Keevan goes for the run by there. Spiral says, go away. And that works pretty well. There's no way Keevan's going to be able to break this. He really has almost nothing. He's got 13 Zerglings and 3 Queens. That's it. Everything else is drones. He's even behind significantly in the drone count. Look at that. 33 drones to 47 probes. That is kind of crazy. As we open the units tab, we can see 33 to 47. Just Keevan not, not doing... Yeah. Six pool. It should have put him at such an advantage, and unfortunately it didn't as he tried to all in and decided not to all in behind it. I completely agree with you, Gary Oak, that a six pool is not technically an all in so long as it does some damage as it did, but then sending two queens halfway across the map, I just don't really think there's any way to come back from that, and if he does, I would be very impressed. Well, you never know. We do see Spiral moving into that Colossus tech with some immortals, so I guess we'll see an immortal gateway Colossus push. Out of him, off to base. Some Zerglings try to poke up it in there. And yeah, I definitely agree with you. That's probably what we're about to see as the Overseer for Keevan. Keevan definitely staying on top of trying to get information from his opponent, but a little bit of miscontrol keeps meaning that he loses uh, Overseers, Zerglings, one at a time. And he does not know about the Robo support bay. That's very critical. He knows about the Robo, but doesn't know about Immortals, doesn't know about the bay. So... He might be able to ooh. guess this is coming, but he has no concrete information. And ooh, a bit of a supply block out of Spyro right there. He's actually cancelling the Immortal and getting a Warp Prism in the meantime. May as well make use of that Robo, I like that. Definitely, now we have more upgrades on the way to level 1 armor. Well, it yeah. looks like I'm eating my words about the whole 
two base thing as he is throwing down a third nexus he's going for the third base gonna go in for the long haul he's safe and steady ahead, so. uh yeah i just i agree with yes. you completely that he should have gone with that two base aggression he's just so far ahead but if he continues to wait gives keeping the chance to maybe get out some mutilus although he's going in festers right now so that's probably not what's going to happen but uh, keeping can potentially harass spiral to the point where he's truly back in this game I can't blame them though, because like for going investors, I mean they're they are a pretty good unit. If anyone has watched IPL five or any major StarCraft tournament in the last three months, yeah, or read the patch notes, <laughs> should mention uh, that this was pre-patch. Yep. So it's still the win fester, as they call it. Oh god. <laughs> no balance complaints, but yeah. Well, we shall see. Creep spread kind of slowly, finally only the starting. It's only the wind fester when there's like a billion of them and he's not nearly at that stage. That's true. Just a few are out. Hopefully they're going to be in position to stop this warp prism that's coming in from the south. We're going to follow it in. Oh and Lord, the non does spot it. And the instantaneous fungal growth does catch this warp prism. He should be able to kill it actually with one more fungal. There it is. And the queen should finish it off. Yep. And heart of the swarm, this will no longer be possible as it will be dodgeable as it will be a projectile. That is so interesting, and I'm excited for it. And I actually watched a game of uh, DJ Wheat and JP <laughs> McDaniels playing uh, with the new patch, and man, they were not happy. Really? Okay. <laughs> well, DJ wasn't because he he's Zerg, right? So. Oh, of course. <laughs> the funny thing about that patch is if you look at it closely, pretty much every single change except the Infestor fixes were Zerg buffs. Is that but, true? Yeah. Like, look at it. Ultralisks got their Bro Charge removed, but their base damage is now 35 to everything. Oh, right, yeah, they're good against 20, everything. It's true. Not 20 plus 15, so Ultra's two-shot Marines. But the Medivac upgrade, I I'm guessing that's going to be scaled back because, like, that reactor, man, that is insane. <laughs> back to the live game at hand, though. We do have a Hive on the way, so we should see a Broodlord transition, but off only three base with the third one just coming up behind the Protoss. Uh, I don't think he'll be able to get enough of the Infestor Broodlord army to really make a difference against Spiral unless he sits back for way too long. And uh, that way too long, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of approaching as the creep spread gets better and better and Keevan establishes a vision everywhere, finds out that Spiral is still really truly on three bases. But Spiral does have a 70 supply lead almost. 70. That's insane. It is. And he will be moving across the map. This should just be the death blow unless he really makes a mistake and gets caught by 50 fungals. Yeah, army supply is doubled. We have corruptors on the way. Uh, Keevan's desperately hoping that he can buy time with the spine crawlers to get out those broodlords. But even if he can, these stalkers have blink and I think there's plenty enough to handle it. And plus two's about to finish. This is a really good time. We do see Spiral setting up that mothership transition too. Stargate's going down, yes indeed, and four pylons being laid down as well. Spiral's played this really, really safe, and I had started to worry for him, but looks like he knows oh. when to move in. Fungal on the sentries, a couple more fungals and they're all going to die, and all the sentries explode almost. Oh gee, Guardian Shield is popped as lots of things are dying everywhere. Force fields go down kind of unnecessarily as there's really no Zergens or anything like that at the it moment. It won't matter. Oh, Soccer's wandering out of position there and just getting slaughtered by the spine crawlers they get surrounded by. The Colossi should be fine. One of them might follow these corruptors, but that's about it. Not enough. There's just not enough Zerg units. Way too much Protoss on the map. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna start the closeout now because I just don't see a way back in. Apologies to Keevan. So it looks like Spiral is gonna take it. That is Colorado School of Mines taking the best of three off of Northern Arizona University who is fending for first place in their division. If they had won this, they would have got it. Unfortunately, it definitely looks like they're not going to. I'm Ord, that's O-R-D, the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Click there to find more from me. With me today was... Gary Oak. Find him on Twitter at Gary Oak Robotron. Click on his image in the lower left there to find more from our casting organization, Map Control Co. Our StarCraft side is uh, Base Trade TV. Boom. And there we go. There's the GG called, and that wraps up our best of three.
There it is. GG! <laughs> War Prism was brought forward there at the very end. 23 supply to 181 as the game ends out. Gary Oak, thank you, sir. Thanks so much for having me, man. It was a pleasure. Bye. <laughs>